Israel. There's satisfaction in that God. Naomi, your God shall be my God. At this point, I renounce everything that I've, I've, I've adored, that I've worshipped, that I've longed for over there in Moab. And I turn myself towards the God of Israel to walk after Him and to follow after Him and to be one with Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is looking for roosts in these days. The Lord is looking for a people in these days that will give up everything to follow Naomi into a Canaan's into Canaan's land. The Lord is looking for a people that will be willing to pay a price of breaking the bondage. But but it's the bondage that, that makes us sad. It's the bondage that makes us unhappy. It's the bondage that, that, that makes us uncomfortable. We're, 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 not, we're not at peace over here. We're like troubled waters all the time over here in this world. And God is looking for a person and people that are willing to follow Naomi into a land. A land of promise. A land of goodness. A land of fullness. A land of satisfaction. The Moabites look for satisfaction in, the, in their drunken parties, in their, in, their, in their idolatrous ways, in their perversion, in their sexuality. The Moabites look for, for satisfaction over here, bowing down to the gods of the land. But they're never satisfied. They're never full. They're never quiet. They're never still. They're never at peace. And Naomi saw that. She saw the peace in the, in the still soul of Naomi. And she knew that that came from the God of Israel. And she said, I want that peace down in my soul. I want that peace down in my heart. I want that, Naomi. Don't entreat me to leave you. I'm embracing you, Naomi. If you have to drag me, but I'm not going to let you go. Your God will be my God. And Hallelujah, hallelujah. No longer the gods of my flesh. No longer do I want to be ruled by my anger and by my pride. I'd lay that back these gods because I want the God of humility. I want the God of strength. I want the God of purity and holiness to be what's ruling and reigning in my life. And then she said, and where thou diest, will I die. Mm -hmm. Naomi, I'm going to follow you to death. I'm going to follow you to the place of death. But I'm not going to let you go. Stubborn. Stubborn. God's looking for a sanctified stubbornness in our souls today. That we'll grab hold of the Holy Ghost and we say, I don't care, I don't care what it costs. I don't care what I have to give up. I don't care where I have to lodge. I don't care what people I'm going to have to run with in this, in this strange crowd of crucified way Christians. I don't care where it is. I don't care what it is. Even if I have to die in the process. Even if, even if you take my life, Naomi. But I'm not going to give you up. And I'm not going to give up that vision and that, and that, 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 that desire to get to that land that you've set before me. Wherever you die, Naomi, that's where I'm going to die. And the Holy Ghost is going to lead us to a place of death. The Holy Ghost is going to lead us out to Calvary many, many times to crucify and to cleanse and to change this old nature inside of us. We can leave the theaters. We can leave the bars. We can leave the, 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 the rock and roll concerts. We can leave the external things out here but still have so much inside of us that Canaan's land will still not be a land of peace. But Ruth knew that there was a place where she could die out to these things within her soul that were making her unhappy and sad and were binding her from the peace and the life that God of Israel had for her. And she said, Naomi, take me to that place of death and there let me die. There let me die. There let me die. Take me to Calvary. That I might see my beloved Messiah. That I might see the beauty of His sacrifice for my sins and for the cleansing of my whole being. Naomi, don't leave me here in Moab. Take me to Calvary that wherever you die, there's where I want to die on that cross of Calvary with my beloved Savior. Take me there that I might be changed, that I might that I might find the fullness of Calvary's cross within my being. Don't leave me. Don't leave me in this world. Don't leave me in the apathy of the Laodicean church. Don't leave me in the, in the wickedness of a worldly, worldly re religious world. Don't leave me, Naomi. Take me out and take me to Canaan's land. And wherever you, you are being buried, there will I be buried. And the Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. This should be the cry of the bride in these last days. It, I don't care, Lord.
even if I have to be buried in a tomb with a rock on the door where there's no hope of, of getting out. I don't care what it is, Naomi, but don't leave me here in this place. If I have to, if I have to die on Calvary, if I have to die in a place of, 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 of a sinner, if I have to die on, in, in Golgotha's hill, I don't care, Naomi. That's where I want to go. And I want to be buried with Him. I want to be in that place of death with Him until my old nature is eaten away by the worms of humility and by the, by the fire of the Holy Ghost until I can be resurrected with a new being as, a, as, a, as an Israelite in love with the husband of her soul and I can find the one that my soul yearns for, Naomi. Don't let me here. Don't leave me here, Naomi. Take me to the Canaan's land that you talk about. Take me to the promised land you talk about and wherever you lead me, there will I go. Wherever you lodge is where I'll lodge. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Wherever you, wherever you walk, that's where I will walk. Wherever thou diest, there will I die. And wherever you're buried, that's where I want to be buried. What a cry of the bride. What a cry of a Christian in these last days. And nothing but death part us. And if you're going on in the bride, there won't be even that death to part. But it's a, it's a determination, uh, that, that holy, holy sanctified stubbornness in, in the soul. This, this is what, this is part of the, of the promises at the altar between a, a husband and a, a, a bridegroom and a bride. I promise thee this and this and this until death do us part. But, but Ruth was saying, not even death is going to part me from, from you. Not even death is going to break this desire that I have in my heart. Only, only at the moment that, that I see you down in the grave will I say, okay, but I'll be going on in the way, in my own way, uh, holding on to the bridegroom that I love. If aught but death part thee in me, I'm going to go on all the way with you. And this should be the cry in our soul for the bridegroom. Even though I have to go down into the waters of your death, even though I have to go down into the, to the separations of my inner being that are, that are deep and that are hard and that are painful, even that, Lord, isn't going to separate me from me because I'm going to cleave to you. I'm going to cleave to you until the fullness of my soul in the relationship is found. I don't care if I'm going to be a poor, orphan, stranger, uh, <clears throat> fatherless person over here. I don't care if I'm going to be a widow in this land, but, but I'm going to be with you, Naomi, and I know that there's going to be something over there. And when Naomi saw the determination in the heart of Ruth, Naomi turned, and I can see them then, uh, uh, we call it embracing each other, crying for another good, good, good time there in the desert, and Orpha walking way off in the distance, and then Naomi and Ruth turning, turning their back on all of that that there was behind them, setting their faces towards Jerusalem to go back to the house of bread, the house of fullness, the house of satisfaction, and the land of praise where their feet were truly going to dance in praise and in, in beauty and in, in, and in love for the bridegroom where Ruth was going to learn the, the beautiful lessons of, of the Israelites and the customs of the Israelites. But more than that, when she came into the land, the last, verse of, the last part of verse 22, when they came into the land. So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab. And they came into Bethlehem in the beginning of the barley harvest. When they went back, it was the time of the barley. And barley is the poor people's bread. Wheat is the rich people's bread, but barley is for the poor people. When they went back, Ruth started gathering up all of this seed of humility that was in the land of Israel. And she started eating it and filling her soul with it. And it was after that, after her two testings by Naomi, her decision to go on through, her cry for the God of Israel, and her determination to walk and to lodge and to walk and to lodge and to, to face the dangers and to die to many things along the way as she was learning more and more from Naomi as she walked through the wilderness to get into that land. When she got there, she didn't find the, the riches of a palace waiting for her. She found a little hut and she found four corners of a field that she had to go out and glean in as a, as a poor, stranger, widow, orphan in the land. 
but it was in that field of poverty it was in that field of nothingness it was in that field of, 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 of paying a price Lord I don't care what I have to become a nothing but I want the God of Israel it was in that field that Boaz came walking in the bridegroom came to her and found her down there harvesting the, the seeds of humility for herself and for Naomi her mother-in-law providing for the one that she loved and that had led her there he found her faithful in the field of humility pouring out her love to this God of Israel and when he saw her, her his eyes were on that one there were many women in the field that day there were many people in the field that day but Boaz said Who's that special one down there in that corner? Who's that one that I can feel something special coming from? Because it was the love for the bridegroom. Ruth didn't even know where he was. Ruth didn't know where she was going to find him. She just knew that there was something special over there waiting for her. And I'm here to tell you today that there's a bridegroom waiting in Canaan's land for a people that are willing to get up and walk away with the Holy Ghost. A way that's not easy, a way of separation, a way of, of leaving behind the gods and the customs of this world. But over in Canaan's land there is a bridegroom with his arms outstretched, with his glory and his power and the, and the beauty of his humility waiting for the ones that will cleave to the Holy Ghost to reach that land. The land is a land where we're going to find the unity and the marriage relationship with that bridegroom. God is calling us in these last days to take a walk with Naomi. God is calling us to get up out of our seats of ease and start crying out, Naomi, wherever you go, that's where I'm going to go. Wherever you walk, that's where I'm going to walk. Whatever hill you climb, whatever valley you go to through, whatever river you have to cross, however long the deserts, however high the mountains, however deep the oceans, Naomi, I'm going to cross them with you because I want I want to find that bridegroom. I want to find that beloved of my soul. And I don't care where you lodge. I don't care where you make me sit to learn my lessons. I don't care where I have to sit down and wait for you to work some things in me to keep moving on. I'm going to cleave to you, Naomi. I'm going to cleave to you in my prayer closet. I'm going to cleave to you in the streets. I'm going to cleave to you at work. I'm going to cleave to you at school. I'm going to cleave to you every place and every way that I'm walking because I want to make Canaan's land. And I don't care if it's the beginning of the barley harvest. I don't care if I'm going to get in in the depths of humility at that time. I know that there's something there. And the one that is there is the Lord Jesus Christ. The one that is waiting is the bridegroom with his arms open, waiting, his, uh, his heart beating for that special one that he's going to see laboring down there, eating of the seeds of humility. You want to go to Canaan's land? You want to go to Zion? You want to walk that place? You want to talk that way? That hymn was just fitting perfectly with what we're seeing today. You want to do it? Then you've got to be willing to come out of Moab and follow the leading of the Holy Ghost. And the prize that's waiting is the prize of all prizes. It's the Lord Jesus Christ in all of His fullness, in all of the humility glory, His exalted glory, the new city, we'll get that over there. But right now He wants us to fall in love with, with, the, with the crucified Christ. That's why wherever thou diest, there die I. Wherever you're going to die in Calvary, that's where I want to go. I want to meet the one that died for me. I want to fall in love with the one that died for me. And then in the fields over here, she finally met the one that her soul longed for. She didn't know what it was over here that kept drawing her, but it was the love of Boaz over here in the fields and the Holy Spirit in between drawing and drawing and drawing. And then came the day where they got married and they gave forth then the seed of the Messiah that was to come down through her loans. A wicked, wicked pagan woman became the bearer of the Messiah of the holy seed of promise we are wicked wicked people today because we grew up in sin but we have a promise that we can bear the righteous seed of Jesus Christ within our loins to feed and to, and to produce children for him and for his kingdom we're called to a high calling in Jesus Christ and God is calling this church and this people along with many other people San Francisco, San Diego, all over the world, China, the word's going out. It's 
the last call for the wedding of the, the, wedding of the Lamb. The call is going forth. These last minutes of earth's time because it's winding up. It's not going to be long before the Antichrist is coming. How many of us will run these last, these last miles through the desert to find Boaz in the fields of humility waiting for us with his arms open to become our bridegroom. Let's stand up and let's ask him today to help us, to give us a vision, to give us a desire, to set us on fire. This kiss that Naomi gave Ruth was a kiss that set her soul on fire and she couldn't put out that fire and Naomi couldn't put it out. Let's ask the Lord to come down and kiss us with a Holy Ghost kiss today to set us on fire with love for the Lord Jesus Christ as we've never been on fire before. Holy Lord, today we come before You thanking You for Your Word, thanking You for the promises that You've set before us. Thank You, Lord, for this book of Ruth that has set before us a, a vision of what is waiting and what we can have if we only start crying out and walking with You. Holy Lord, Seal this Word within the hearts of Your children. Let it give forth fruit unto You, Holy Father, in the days ahead. And may their feet truly walk the ways of Naomi. May their feet truly walk out of Moab into Canaan's land. May their hearts and their souls be, in, be incited and be, be filled with the fire of desire for You, Lord, as never before. Your coming is soon, Jesus. We have a short time. We don't have a long time to run. We don't have a long time to wait. Heavenly Father, set us aflame with the love for the bridegroom and a cry for the bridegroom that only Ruth had within her soul and that we should get within our souls crying out for that land of promise that we might reach it very, very quickly in these last days. Do a quick work within us, Lord. Lead us on and help us to find that place of rest for our souls at the feet of Boaz, at the feet of our heavenly bridegroom, where He then will become the provider and the satisfier and the protector and the all in all for all of our souls. And we'll give You the praise and the glory for it, Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank You, Lord. We thank You. We thank You. We thank You, Jesus, for the promises that are within Your Holy Word. Bless this people. Guard and protect them and lead them on into higher walk with you, Jesus, and we'll give you the praise for it in your holy, righteous name. Hallelujah, 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 sweet Jesus, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah.